Hello, this is the Glass Tower Top 5 for the week of August 25th, 2016. I'm Rainy Knudsen. I'm Christina Reese. This week we are counting down the top five museums in Texas. Dun, dun, dun. Well, first of all, we're here at D. Mitchell's house in, uh, in Dallas mm -hmm. to do this. So a, a list of our top five museums in Texas. This is, is hard. Yeah, it's hard and we are absolutely ready to entertain arguments that this is uh, an arbitrary and fatuous exercise. We've been talking about it for a while. <laughs> we do have criteria. So this has not been an easy list to determine. And I will say, there are so many museums that yeah, I mean, this was we enjoy and There was a love. bit of a Sophie's Choice uh, situation going on with some of this, because I'm hugely crazy about the McNay in San Antonio. What a beautiful building. What a cool collection within that building. Yes. Um, I get excited when I visit. I think it's the prettiest museum in Texas. I love the Blanton. I love their works on paper. Um, and I'm excited to see what they do with their upstairs galleries, but yeah. and their, I, th I think their exhibition schedule is excellent. Their yeah. SAMA is weird and quirky, but always very fun. Yeah. Their Greco-Roman holdings are, I think, unmatched in the state. Yeah, the Modern in Fort Worth is has the best speaker series in Texas oh, by far. hands down. And the building, I mean, the experience the of being yeah. there yeah. is wonderful. It, I really like the Grace. Um, I've been going there for the, uh, in for the past. Yeah, I've been enjoying the exhibitions there. I like the curation there is good. Yeah. Uh, the Stark. I love the Stark in Orange, Texas. It's a most people probably don't even know about it, but they have an unbelievable collection of Western and early American art, Tau School of Art, um, and it's you know practically in Louisiana. The Kimball Pound for Pound probably the strongest collection pound for pound in the state. And there's a certain kind of exhibition that they can do so well, and you're only going to see that kind of exhibition at the Kimball if you're in Texas. And so with that, with that, our criteria. Yeah, the collection, the exhibitions and programming, the architecture slash the feel of the space when you get there and move through it. What was the other? Potential. Oh, the potential. This is ineffable. Like, how well does the museum fulfill its potential? Which museums have good cycles and rough cycles? They, they have, yeah, they're, they are cyclical and they go through really killer patches where they just are blowing and going and can do no wrong. And then they go through periods where they struggle because of uh, uh, director changeover mm -hmm. or lots of different reasons. Mm -hmm. Caveat, caveat, caveat. Uh, so let's just do this. Yeah, let's just. So number five, mm -hmm. the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. Ah, the MFAH. Giant the collection. 8,000 pound gorilla. Yeah. Many people don't realize just how much bigger the MFAH is than any other museum in Texas. It is the second richest museum in the country after the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The holdings are deep and vast. Um, and as much as I get frustrated with the MFAH with, you know, their exhibitions or their programming or their acquisitions of a million plus dollar, you know, Kusama room, and I think their buildings are terrible, I will say <laughs> that they're terrible. What is so great about the MFAH is the collections, and I never, never fail to visit the permanent collection galleries and not have delight and discovery and it's always an experience where I'm like, I had no idea they had this and what an amazing object this is or painting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, for the depth of the collections, um, the MFAH has to be on the list. Absolutely. So number four is the Panhandle Plains Historic mm. Museum. PPHM. Yeah, this is a big favorite of mine. Um, it's in Canyon, Texas, which is- Where is Canyon? It's a, like an hour south of Amarillo. It's way up there in the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. um, although people in the Panhandle would say, that's not that far up, because you can still go quite a ways. <laughs> so this museum is, was built in, I think, the 30s. Yeah, it's a Prairie Deco building. The thing is, is that it ha somehow psychologically and emotionally encompasses the essence of Texas, of being a Texan, of the history of Texas, of the very bloody history of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't flinch from what has been violent and disturbing about that. It has uh, quilts and dioramas and guns and an oil derrick and you just turn every corner and it's like, I, ugh, this is. So why put it on a list of art museums? Well, it does have a it does have a good exhibition program. We reviewed the George Catlin Buffalo mu show that they've done. Yeah, that was incredible. And I, I have to say, walking through the museum that first time was it was an emotionally overwhelming experience for me, a, a born and bred Texan. And their exhibition schedule, I think, very much focuses on 
uh, early Western and early Texas artists. And there is a renewing interest in early Texas artists. And they've just done such a good job over the years, year in, year out, with their exhibition schedule. Oh, and yeah. number three is the Eamon Carter Museum of Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, Notable for one reason because uh, it is the only museum that dedicates itself to American art in the state. In fact, they changed their name, I think, a few years ago to the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art, mm -hmm. uh, which very much reflects their holdings, uh, which are deep in Western art. Um, their Remingtons and Russells are better than anybody's in Texas. Their photography collection is world famous. World famous, very, very strong photography collection. Despite the fact that the collection is enough to land it on this list anyway, its exhibitions have been very, very good. Yes. Fifteen years ago, the Eamon Carter probably would not have made this list because it was pretty stodgy. You yeah. Know? And I think that they, without getting cute or grasping at straws, they have really bumped up the rigor of their game. And the Thomas Hart Benton show was One of the best killer. things I've seen in the last few years. It's, they've had some of the best exhibitions of the last few years, which is why they keep landing on our top five list. Number two is the Nasher Sculpture Center. And Dallas, of course, of, of course. course. Um, as far as uh, talk about personality, graciousness, um, generosity, generosity spirit. Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a, a relationship that it has to the people in Dallas Fort Worth and to the art scene. It just raises the bar. It raises the tone. The building and the garden in particular. I mean, they are a delight yeah. to visit. So while the Nasher may not have landed on this list just based on the collection. It hits the ball out of the park uh, and sets the gold standard for all of Texas on the building and experience uh, criteria. Just as a role model and how it interacts with the, the people who go there. And number one, the Menil the Collection. Menil, the Menil, of course the Menil. Like every single museum on this list, I have a bone to pick with, absolutely, and the Menil is no exception to that. They are precious, they call, they talk about their sacred space, they don't allow photography in the galleries, which alone is so irritating that <laughs> it would be enough for me to not let them be on that the list. That is really a pet peeve of yours. It, but, but, my God, this collection is so wonderful. And this incredible, intimate, personal experience it's like you're in their home yes but um, and the quirkiness of their vision and what it was that they chose to focus on from ancient attic and babylonian and cretian objects to 20th century african totems and masks of course the surrealism and just the killer uh 20th century collection. Yes. I drive down to Houston and I get excited when I know I'm going to the Manil. You're excited to go to the Manil and you're a lot, you know, you've been in Houston this whole time. I, the Manil just really does set the gold standard. It, it, if it could just get a little bit of Nasher friendliness and allow photography, forget it. Yeah. Um, also the opening of the Drawing Center is going to be a major addition and I think the that will change the game in Texas a lot. So what's your list? Yeah let us know. What did we leave off? What, did, what, what should we have moved up or down the list? That This is the list this year. In two or three years we might do it again and it'll probably be a different list. It would probably be a different list but if you have thoughts please let us know mm -hmm. and in the meantime um, go see some art. Go see some art.